Hi, in this video we are going to solve all the IGCSE computer science exam questions from 2018 to 2023. This includes multiple choice, true and false, fill in the blanks and matching question. So let's start the video. The paragraph describes an MP3 file, MP4 file and an MIDI file. Complete the paragraph using the list of term, not all term in the list need to be used. Let's see the first term, uh, first fill in the blank, dash files are a multimedia format that store video and audio, so that is the MP4. Dash files are only used as digital recording of sound, so that are MP3 file, MP3 file are only used for the sound. Uh, they are created using a microphone and a recording software. The data in the file is compressed. Dash files contain instruction on how to create the sound, so MIDI file They are created using digital instrument. The file is stored individual notes. Each one can be changed. So can is here, so can be changed in this file type. Jack has an MP3 file stored on his computer. Tick to show which type of data is stored in MP3 file. So in MP3 file, we store the sound. Tick to show whether the MP3 file is lossy compressed file or lossless compressed file or not a compressed file. So MP3 is a lossy compressed file. Complete the sentence in James' answer using the list given. Not all item in the list need to be used. So this is, this is the list, okay? So let's start. As human, we process analog data. I guess first will be analog. But computer cannot process this type of data for, for a computer to be able to process d data. It need to be converted to digital. This one. As human, we mostly use a dash number system as human we use the dandy number system it's a base 10 number system computer uses a dash number system computer uses binary number system it's a base 2 number system okay <laughs> Tick to show which type of data is stored in a JPEG file. So JPEG file is uh, used to store the image files. Next one, compression can be used to reduce the size of a file. Tick to show whether a JPEG file is a lossy compressed file or a lossless compressed file or not a compressed file. So JPEG is a lossy compressed file. Tick to show whether each statement applies to checksum, check digit or parity check. Some statement may apply to more than one error checking method. Okay, so the first statement is uh, use this an additional bit to create odd or even number of one. So that is parity check. Next one is check for the errors on data entry. So that is check digit. Okay, check digit is used to check data for data entry. And next one is uh, compares two calculated values to see if the error has occurred. So check sum and check digit both a uh, uh, use the calculated value okay next one will not detect the transposition uh, transposition error so that is parity check and the last option is sends additional values when data is transmitted from computer to another computer so uh, data transmission so is checksum and the parity check so check digit is not used for the data transmission okay computer files can be saved in different file formats four file formats and four file types are given draw a line to match each file format to the most suitable file type so first one is jpeg jpeg is an image file okay so second one mp3 mp3 is an audio file format okay 
mp4 mp4 is a video file format and text text is a text file not txt the table contain four different file formats that uses compression tick to show whether each file format uses lossy or lossless compression okay so first one is the file first file format is jpeg jpeg is used for images and it uses the lossy compression next one is mp3 mp3 used for audio it also uses the lossy compression next next one is the mp4 mp4 is used for the video it also uses the lossy compression method and the last one is zip zip uh, is uses the lossless compression 4 7 bit binary values are transmitted from one computer to another a parity bit was added uh, to each binary value creating 8 bit binary values all binary values have been transmitted correctly tick to show whether an even or an odd parity check has been used for each binary okay so we need to count the number of ones if the number of one are even so it means the, they are using the even parity bit if the number of one is odd it means and that they are using the odd parity bit okay so this one is all eight eight is an even number so it means the first one is correct next one we have two and four also even two four six also even and one so this is odd so that's it tick to show whether each statement applies to automatic repeat request or arq check digit or check sum some statements may apply to more than one error checking method so let's see the first statement checks for error on data entry so that is check digit next one is uses a process of acknowledgement and timeout so that is arq uh, next one is compare two calculated values to see if an error has occurred so in both check digit and check sum are you know, true for this one next one may resend data until it is confirmed as received so that is arq and the last statement is check for errors in data after transmission from a computer to another so that is check sum three description and three types of error transmission are given tick the correct box to show the type of error transmission for each description okay so the first description is multiple bits are sent and received at the same time so that is duplex an example of duplex is telephone transmission okay in the telephone both parties a and b can talk at the same time or send it at the same time next one is bit are sent one at a time in a single direction so that is the simplex example of simplex is the television or the radio or you can also think of the mouse or the mouse or keyboard when you connect you can only send the data but you cannot receive the data back right and the last one is bits are sent using a single wire data can be sent or received but not at the same time so that is the half duplex and example of half duplex is the walkie talkie three description and two methods of data transmission are given I tick the correct box to show the method of data transmission for each description okay so first description is multiple bits are sent and received at the same time so that is the parallel next one is bit are sent one at a time in a single direction so that is the serial and bits are sent using a single wire data can be sent or, or received but not at the same time so that is also a serial data transmission a computer can have both mac address and an ip address four statements are given about mac addresses and ip addresses tick to show whether each statement is true or false a mac address is a unique to a computer on a network so that is true once an ip address has been set it cannot be changed nor it is false because we have two types of uh, ip address one is called the static ip address the other one is called the dynamic ip address so that dynamic ip address changes every time you connect to a to a to the wi-fi router next one is a mac address is made up of computers serial number and the ip address so that is false next one if a computer does not have an ip address it cannot communicate with other devices using the internet so that is true if you don't have the ip address the device cannot communicate with other devices on the internet a school network is used to transmit and store data about students different types and methods of transmission can be used to send data across the network three description about data transmission are given take one method and take one type of each description okay so first description is data is sent down a single wire in a single direction only so single wire is the serial 
and the single direction is simplex. Next one is data is sent down multiple wires. So multiple wire is a parallel, okay? Uh, in both direction at the same time. So that is duplex. Uh, last option is data is sent down a single wire, single wire again. We have serial uh, in both directions, but never at the same time. So that is half duplex. Tick to show if each statement applies to serial simplex, parallel simplex, parallel half duplex or serial duplex data transmission some statements may apply to more than one data transmission method okay so the first statement is bits are transmitted along a single wire so single wire we know it's a serial so serial simplex and serial duplex data is transmitted in both direction okay so it's uh, data is transmitted in both directions so that is the uh, half duplex okay parallel half duplex and uh, serial duplex Next one, it is on, it is only suitable for the distance less than five meters. So that is parallel. Okay, so parallel uh, simplex and parallel half duplex. Next one is bits from the same byte are transmitted one after the other. So that is the serial. Okay, serial simplex and serial duplex. Next one is data may not arrive in the correct sequence. So this is the problem with this parallel data transmission, and we call this problem skewing. Right, so. Parallel simplex and parallel half duplex. Next one is data is transmitted in both direction, but only one direction at a time. So that is half duplex. So the correct answer is parallel half duplex. Four seven bit binary values are transmitted from one computer to another. A parity bit was added to each binary value, creating eight bit binary value. All binary values have been transmitted correctly. Tick to show whether an even or an odd parity check has been used for each binary value. Okay, so same thing. We will count the number of ones. So in this, we have two ones, which means it's using the even parity. This one also has two ones, so it's also using the even parity. Three ones, so it's using odd parity, and this one also two ones, so it's using even parity. Macy purchases a new router and attaches it to her computer. The connection she sets up uses duplex data transmission. Five statements are given about duplex data transmission. Tick to show if the statement is true or false. Okay, so the first statement is duplex data transmission can be either serial or parallel. Yes, that is true. Uh, next one is the duplex data transmission is when data is transmitted both ways, but only one way at a time. No, that is false. That is the half duplex. Next one, duplex data transmission is always used to connect a device to a computer. No, that is also false, okay? Next one, duplex data transmission is when data is transmitted both ways at the same time. Yes, this is true. And the last option is duplex data transmission automatically detects any errors in the data that is false. We also need to implement some data uh, error detection methods to detect the errors, okay? The table shows four definitions. Complete the table giving the missing term for each definition. So let's see the first definition, a data transmission method that sends data one bit at a time down a single wire. So we know that is the serial data transmission because serial data transmission uses single wire, okay? An address given to a device on a network, This the address is assigned by the network. So that is IP address or internet protocol address, okay, IP address. The software used to render HTML and display the web pages. So this is a software, we know this is called the web browser. And the last uh, definition is an address given to a device at the manufacturing stage that can be used to Identify the device on a network, so that is called the MAC address, M-A-C address. So MAC stands for Media Access Control Address, okay? MAC address. Take one box to show which device would assign the IPv4 address to the computer. So first option A, domain name server, no it is not. Network interface card, no it is not. Router, yes that is correct, but let's see the option D. Web server. Web server is often correct, so the correct option is C. 
router. Tick one box to show which statement is true about the impact of logical left a shift would have on the binary number. So logical left shift, right? So the least significant bits are lost. No, uh, the most significant bits are lost. So that is that's correct. Let's see the C and D. The number has been divided by six. No, it is not. The number stays the same. Uh, no, it is not. So the correct option is B. A company transmits data to external storage at the end of each day. But parity check can be used to check for the errors during the data transmission. The system uses all parity check. Okay. Uh, tick to show for each of the received byte whether they have been transmitted correctly or transmitted incorrectly. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to count the number of one in the byte. Okay. For example, this one. And if the number of bytes are odd, because we are using the odd, it means the data transmitted correctly. But if they are even, okay, the number of one even in the bytes means data transmitted incorrectly. Okay, so let's count now. So a first byte we have two, three, and four. Four is the even number, so it means this byte transmitted incorrectly. Okay. Next one we have three, four, and five. We have five. Five is the odd number, so this byte transmitted correctly. Let's see this one three and four, five. This again transmitted correctly. Next one, we have 3, 1 here, so this also transmitted it correctly. Six internet terms and six definitions are listed. Draw a line to connect each term to the correct definition. Okay, so the first definition is the program that allow a user to view web pages, so that is web browser. Okay, so here we can connect this one. Next one is the main protocol that govern the transmission of data using the internet, so that is HTTP protocol, okay. Next one is the the website address that is typed into the address bar. So that is the URL. Okay, we have a URL here. Next one is an address given to each device on a network. It is provided by the network. So that is the IP address. Next one is a unique address given to a device on a network. It is provided by the manufacturer. So this is the MAC address. Okay, and the last option is a company that provides a connection to access the internet so that is the, this company we call it ISP or internet service provider so this one is here draw a line to connect each term to the correct application okay so first application is a telephone that can receive and transmit audio signal simultaneously so that is the duplex okay a two-way radio or walkie-talkie that can receive and transmit messages but not at the same time so that is half duplex and a microphone that transmit data to a, to a M, MIDI system, so that is simplex. Six component of one Neumann model of a computer system and six description are given. Draw a line to match each component to the most suitable description. Okay, so the first one is a uh, description is whole data and instruction when they are loaded from the main memory and are waiting to be processed, that is the IAS, okay. Next one, whole data temporarily that is currently being used in a calculation. So that is registered. We call it accumulated register. Okay. This one will go here. Next one is whole data or instruction temporarily when they are being processed. So there's a register. So register is here. Next one is manage the flow of data and instruction between the component of the pro uh, processor. So that is the control unit. So control unit manage those things. Next one is carry out the calculation on the data that is ALU or arithmetic logical unit. And the last one is pathway for transmitting data and instruction and that is bus. Five storage devices or media are listed in the table. Tick to show whether each storage device or media is an example of primary, secondary or offline storage. Okay, so first let's let's get the definition. So what is the primary storage? Primary storage is a uh, type of storage that is directly accessed by the CPU. Secondary storage is a type of storage that is not directly accessed by the CPU and it is inside the computer case. And often storage is any storage that is not connected to the internet and is outside of the computer box. Okay, so first one is the external HDD. External HDD is not the primary storage. Okay, 
it's not also not the secondary storage you can call it a secondary storage but because it's not inside this uh, the computer case so we can the correct term for external HDD is offline storage next one is the RAM RAM is a type of primary storage that is directly accessed by the CPU okay next one is internal SSD so this is a type of secondary storage because it's inside the the computer case next one is the ROM ROM is read-only memory and it's a type of primary storage and the last one is DVD DVD is not inside the computer and so that's why we can call him call it uh, offline storage two example of output devices are 3d printer and a 3d cutter the table contain four statement about 3d printers and 3d cutters a tick to show which statement apply to each output device and some statement may apply to both output devices okay so the first one is uh, output a physical 3d product so both 3d cutter and 3d printer can output a physical project uh, the product okay it uses a high power laser to create the output so that is a 3d cutter it uses the high power laser creates 3d prototypes both uh, 3d printer and 3d cutter can create the 3d prototypes and the last option is uses layer of material to create the output so that is 3d print A computer uses RAM and ROM to store data. The table contains three statements about RAM and ROM. Tick to show whether each statement describes RAM or ROM. Okay. So RAM and ROM both are the type of uh, primary uh, storage. Okay. Uh, the primary storage is the type of storage that is directly accessed by the CPU. So RAM is volatile storage. It means it can only store data when uh, there is a voltage. And the ROM is non-volatile storage, which means it can store data if, even if there is no power okay so so first statement is uh, store the program and the data that are currently in use so that is ram used to boot up the computer when the power is turned off so that is rom okay and last option is uh, content are retained when the power is turned off so that is also rom <laughs> six hardware devices are shown tick to show if each hardware device is an input device output or storage device so first one is solid state drive or ssd so that is a storage device next one is a sensor sensor is an input device headphone headphone is an output device microphone is an input device usb flash drive is an storage device actuator is an output device six component of a computer are given some are part of the central processing unit of one neumann model of a computer system tick to show if each component is a cpu component or or is not a cpu component first one is alu arithmetic and logic unit so that is a cpu component hard disk hard disk not a cpu component next one is the mar or memory address register so that is a cpu component next one is random access memory so that is not a cpu component uh, ssd or solid state this is also not a cpu component cu or control unit so this is also the CPU component. Six devices are shown. Tick to show if each device is an input, output, or storage device. So keyboard is an input device, sensor is an input device, 3D cutter is an output device, 2D scanner is also an input device, microphone is an input device, and hard disk also is a storage device. Five hardware devices are given. Tick to show if each device is an input, output, or storage device. So first one is SSD. SSD is a storage device. Headphone is an output device. 2D cutter is also an output device. LCD projector is also an output device. And microphone is an input device. The computer has media access control or MAC address. So this is the MAC address, okay? So the question is tick to show whether the MAC address is, initi is initially assigned to the computer by the network, uh, the manufacturer, or the user. So media access control address is, is assigned by the manufacturer. <laughs> Gurdeep sets up a web server to host her website. She reads about IP address, MAC address, and the URL. Draw a line to connect each term to the correct example. So this is IP address, okay? Uh, this is the example of MAC address. 
and this is the example of URL. Tick to show if each device is an example of input device, an output device or a storage device. So keyboard is an input device, microphone is an input device, headphone is an output device, hard disk is a storage device, actuator is an output device. Tick one box to show which statement is benefit of writing a program in high level in high level language instead of low level language okay so the first option is the program can directly manipulate the hardware no that is false uh, the program is machine independent that is true but let's read the other options the program is more memory efficient no that is also incorrect the program is quicker to execute no it's not quicker to execute because it needs a translation so the correct option is b next uh, the self checkout system uses two type of primary storage circle two types of primary storage that would be used in the system so cd is a type of secondary storage okay it's not used next one is dvd is also it's a it's a optical storage so it's not used next one is hard disk is also not used std ram yes ram is a type of primary storage okay we can circle this one ram and rom is also a type of primary storage we can also circle this out and usb is also the incorrect Circle 3 devices that are output devices. So actuator is an output device, DVD is not, keyboard is an input device, microphone is an input device, mouse is an input device, printer is an output device, Sen scanner is an input device, sensor is an input device, solid state drive or SSD is an input uh, is a storage device, speaker is an output device. Tick one box to show which statement is correct about writing computer program in high level language. Okay, first one mnemonics are used uh, to create instruction no that is uh, used in assembly language which is a low level language the computer program is harder to debug than the low level language no this is also false it's easy to debug the, uh, the code uh, if it's written in high level language okay uh, c the computer program is machine independent so yes that is true let's read the last option uh, the hardware of the computer can be directly manipulated no it's incorrect so the correct option is c to show which statement about the firewall is true uh, first statement is firewall can only be hardware based no that is false For, uh, firewalls can only be software based no it's also false uh, firewall can be hardware based or software based so that is true next question is to show whether assembly language is an example of high level language a low level language or machine language machine code so assembly language is an example of what is an example of low level language tick to show whether each component is an example of input output or storage so actuator is an output device okay register is a storage device sensor is an input device mouse is also an input device a dvd is also a storage device